Hi everyone, welcome to Assessment and Learning 2 class. In today's session, we are going to talk about performance assessment strategies and tools. And more or less, we will be focusing on the tools uh, which will be used in grading or in assessing a student's performances and um, products. Okay, at the end of the session, you are expected to distinguish the different performance assessment tools or instruments and design assessment tools for performances and products. Uh, to have a short review, last time we had this discussion about um, designing a performance test and more or less following the GRA, SPS, or the GRASP model. And we have discussed as well one of the tools that we will be using or we had discussed one of the tools um, that is uh, used in assessing um, performances okay performances or products uh, that is what we call the rubric so you have here rubric is a scoring tool that lists the criteria of what counts for a piece of work and it is also an evaluation tool that describes the quality of work on the range from excellent to poor and it measures the student's work against real life criteria and is referred to as form of authentic assessment okay so when you do uh, when you ask your students to perform something, when you ask your students to make something, it must be provided with this one, rubric, okay? So basically, we have two types of rubric. The first one is the holistic rubric. This is also known as generic rubric, okay? This is the type of rubric that requires the teacher to score an overall product or performance as a whole. So you have here the example of a holistic rubric. Okay, and then um, last time as well, we had discussed the analytic rubric as well, another type of rubric which is more specific other than uh, the holistic one. So this is the type of rubric that provides information regarding the performances of every component. Sure, for analytic rubric is that every criteria or category or domain has this specific uh, descriptor. Yeah. Okay, and more or less, we had discussed as well the parts of a rubric. Basically, a rubric has its part. You have this one, the task, the name of the task. Um, and then the side here um, is the, uh, are the criteria or the criteria depending on uh, what are the things that you need to see for this particular performance or for this particular product. And as you can see here, these are the level of performance or the quality. And then... Um, below it is the score or the rating so you can one two three it's up to you on a, uh, what rating will you put there under each um, level of performance or quality and you have this one here the descriptions are also known as a performance indicator or uh, simply as descriptor so more or less a rubric ha uh, has all of um, these parts okay our main focus of this discussion are other scoring instrument, performance assessment and uh, scoring instruments that can be used um, for us teachers um, to rate or to assess our uh, students when it comes to performing authentic uh, tasks. So you have the first one here, observation, and more or less, uh, we begin with observation. Observation is an informal assessment technique of watching students to identify the strength, weaknesses, patterns of behavior, and cognitive strategy. Observation as well help us determine which students need additional support and how to adjust instruction to encourage uh, more and better learning. So let's not forget that the purpose of assessment is really to improve the teaching and learning process. Observation as well help determine which students need additional uh, support and how to adjust instruction okay this is a technique where, where uh, we can get information about our students um, about the students pattern of behavior and then uh, what are the things that uh, they need what are the things that we will do as teachers in order for us to supplement or to enhance the teaching and learning process okay so this is the first step okay you are there as an observer or as an evaluator ev uh, observing the students and then uh, upon observing the students we have to really identify what are the things that we need to observe okay um, we should have this written guidelines we should have this um, 
criteria uh, for us to really tell if our students so we have um, when we observe something we should put a goal okay uh, we should uh, have the something in mind uh, uh, this is these are the things that uh, i need to look at with this particular observation okay so when observing observation is really common when assessing authentic tasks or when evaluating performances okay uh, when doing this observation you as observer or the evaluator has to bring something okay your presence is um kind of i would be less um, effective when you are there observing if you can record what you have observed and then uh, there is no documentation of the things that um happened uh, around the, the class or in the class okay so when you do observation uh, you must bring something uh, in order for you to document um those observations okay so in relation to that we have this one the anecdotal uh, notes anecdotal uh, notes this is where um, we used to record specific observations of individual students behavior okay skills and attitude as they relate to the outcomes in the program of studies and then it is also written as the result of ongoing on, um, observations during the lessons but may be also written in response to the product or performance as the student has completed and um, anecdotal record or anecdotal notes so this is also known as narrative these are brief objective and focus on specific outcomes as what they have said earlier that when you do observation you must set an objective what are the things that i need to look at okay so here when you do um anecdotal notes for every student as well so you have to focus on the specific okay uh, you have to stick with your objective what are the things or what are the skills that you need to what do you call this one um, that you need to observe what are the things in, um, that you will look at of this particular student for example and then such notes of uh, when you have this one um, the right things that you have um, those notes can provide cumulative information on student learning and direction for further instruction okay so in doing this one in doing the anecdotal notes or record uh, you should document you should record you should note all the things that you have observed based on your uh, objectives in the class uh, right after or immediately after the observation so that it will be accurate and then the notes or the record that you have there can be shared with uh, the, um, the students parents or guardian during the parent and teacher conferences so this is now um, a way of uh, communicating okay uh, communicating with the students uh, parents okay so the purposes of doing anecdotal record or doing anecdotal notes is to uh, really uh, provide information is to provide information regarding the student's development over time, uh, provide ongoing records um, about individual instructional needs, especially when you find this particular student has, um, that has, uh, what do you call this one, learning a gap. So you need to find out what, are, what aspect that you, we need to remediate. So that's really the anecdotal record or notes can help us identify what are those learning gaps as well. So um, anecdotal record as well capture observations of significant behaviors that more or less may be uh, a factor why this particular student is not learning this particular concept. Um, anecdotal record as well provides this ongoing documentation um, of learning that may be shared uh, with parents and teachers um, when the students will will progress and uh, on the next level so you have this a permanent uh, you have this record permanent record um, of um, students progress which we can 
put in the student's portfolio so that if ever uh, the, the student will progress in the next level we can always refer ano man siya, ingun ani man siya. so there is there um, the record uh, during the past uh, years or months that this following students if you are familiar okay if you are familiar with uh, the story of Teddy Stellard the teacher is doing the record so that the teacher uh, Mrs. Thompson, okay, observed that this particular student, Teddy Stellard, is behaving uh, differently from the rest of the class. So, what did uh, Mrs. Thompson do? Of course, scanning the record of um, Teddy, the student Teddy, previous record of student uh, named Teddy, and then she found out that uh, Teddy, during her uh, daddy during his lower years uh, he was very active and then he was a performer a performer in the class and then um, suddenly a happening within the family affects okay Teddy's performance in school so by having those anecdotal records no, but having those notes and records uh, the teacher uh, is uh, Mrs. Thompson was able to know okay with the situation right so that's why anecdotal notes or narrative or anecdotal record is really important especially when uh, you are in the basic education to keep track your learners okay so more or less this is a sample of a, um, an anecdotal record uh, the, the format re regardless of the format given by the institution or the school where you are teaching so you have there the common um, elements that you can found in uh, that particular uh, anecdotal notes of course you have um, the observer you also teach the observer and then observation date observation time and then of course the very important is the student the students that you are observing so students name and then you have there the next part here is the summary or description of the observation so you have to write down everything that you, uh, you observe of this particular student now it is hard for us to, to, to do this one no? uh, during this um, setup but before when I was teaching the subject before I let uh, my students to observe a uh, three week straight of the play group okay Pl play group learner each of my students each of my students uh, has this uh, assignment or assigned uh, play group participant and they are uh, they were okay they were observing uh, this particular uh, play group uh, for three consecutive Saturdays if um, by improvement when it comes to students participation in the group and etc okay and then they will uh, list down every, uh, everything that they have observed in that particular session okay so you have here uh, for you to be more specific so it's okay to put uh, the strengths that you have observed and then what are the weaknesses or the needs of this particular student but then again we have to uh, go back to the, our set goals or we have to go back on our set uh, outcomes kung unsa ang atong tanawin all right but having this one strength and weaknesses or needs uh, this is also optional it's up to you if you will put this one but uh, make sure that you have the summary or the description of the observation or we call it the anecdote and then having been um, uh, having this description or the summary of your observation what are the things that you need to recommend for the next step whether um, the learner needs uh, remedial classes or special sessions so it's up to you as the observer on what are your recommendations out from your observation and if there's a need uh, for you to uh, if if uh, for example no it is not kind of I what do you call this one in a certain class especially with a large number uh, there are cases that there are special uh, students that will be joining the normal classes so if ever you have observed a different behavior uh, from the rest of the class so it's up to you as an observer uh, to recommend for special or accommodation for special needs if there is 
mga if there are, okay? If there are special needs, pero wala, so just have the recommendation for the next step. Okay, whether we do something about this particular student because he is not participative, he is um, uh, too silent uh, in the corner of the classroom, so maybe uh, that could, um, maybe the teacher can do something about it. So you have to put there um, under recommend, uh, you have to put it under recommendation for the next step. Of course, as part of the documentation, you have to sign it. As observer, you have to sign the form. Uh, so let's proceed with the, the next one. Uh, we have here the checklist. Okay, maybe uh, you are, I know that you are familiar with this one, the checklist. Usually offer a yes no format in relation to students' demonstration of specific criteria, whether the, uh, whether the student uh, possessed or showed this particular um, criteria. So you have to check okay from the word checklist you have to check whether yes or no or um showed or not okay so this is a uh, similar to a uh, light switch okay on and off so if the observable behavior is there so you have to put yes okay so they may be used to record observation of an individual or group or the whole class so you have there the example here the college of teacher education checklist for um demonstration teaching they have there the criteria. Of course, they have the name of the demonstrator, the course, the date, and then the most important thing here is the criteria, or we call it the domain. So what particular domain? And under those domain, we have this performance indicator. So you have here performance indicator, or really the descriptor. All right, and then you have to read here as an observer. You have to understand it is very, um, it is advisable that when you uh what you call this one when you use the words that you will be using for this particular case it's really understandable um for uh, it has no what they call this literary meaning so it has a very uh, literal meaning it can be uh, it is the, the words are simple and can be understood by both of the demonstrator or the person mm -hmm. who is um evaluated and the person evaluating the performance so you have here formulates objectives under the criteria objective preparation so you have here formulates objectives that are aligned to the target most important learning competency so you have to check it to your student the demonstrator if he or she uh, possesses uh, or he or she does the particular thing so you have here yes or no so if ever uh, nakita mo so you have to uh, check here, yes. Next scoring um, instrument for a performance or product is what we call the rating scale. So rating scale is just, um, as you can see, the example here is more or less the same with a rubric, okay? Uh, and then more or less maguang, okay? It's a checklist. So rating sca uh, scales allow teachers to indicate a degree Okay, we have to take note here the degree or the frequency of behavior uh, scales and strategies displayed by the learners. So rating scales as well states the criteria you have here or the domain uh, and provide three or four responses. So the, the, uh, the responses, three or four, this is the standard, but depending on the maximum for this one is five. This is like one, two, three, four, five or one, two, three, four. Okay, but I advice no being uh, your teacher i advise to have this um, even distribution just for um what you call this one for rate uh, for rating one two three four or even rating no? to describe the uh, the quality or uh, frequency of students work now as you can see here so you have here the a rating scale for um demonstration as well uh, never mind uh, the label here Okay, so you have here the criteria. So class observation and conferences or the domain, what particular area uh, which are, you know, what particular area that you will be observed. So you have here from class observation and conferences. So these are the performance indicator. What are the, or the key performance indicator. What are the things that you want to Okay, if ever, um, the students possess or the students 
possess the, or that particular student possesses this one how okay you have to uh, how much okay unsa kataas unsa kanindot okay so you have here the observed performance the quality of the performance so it could be okay so you have to use the script uh, in here uh, on the observed performance you have to use descriptive okay descriptor or descriptive words just like uh, here the examples are uh, exits expect uh, expectations so you have here the uh, the rate of three and then meets expectation yeah, the rate of two needs more practice rate of one you can change this quality here or you can have this one as um, excellent satisfactory and then needs improvement so it's up to you on how you will qualify and quantify the behavior observed and there is now the corresponding uh, rating that rating could be uh, qualitative and quantitative rating all right so you have there just like um, the example here okay and then combining all the things that we have there the checklist the rating scales we can create now uh, the, the most uh, reliable no? I, I am not saying that these are not reliable these are not valid tools but the more um, reliable or the, the, the uh, I can say that the combining checklist and rating scales you have now the rubric so more or less the rubric is the extended version of the tools and then the last one here is the memory approach okay from the word memory and approach or this is also um, an approach or strategy when it comes to observing the students when performing the task without taking any notes. That's what I have said earlier uh, during the, 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 the introduction of this uh, discussion that when you observe, when you are there in the classroom to observe certain behaviors, you must have something. Uh, you must bring something correct for the performance, okay? So memory approach is um, also suggested, but uh, um, not that uh, being encouraged not to do or to, to, to have this or I am not encouraging everyone to do this most of the time inside the classroom because again this happened when you are observing performances without taking any notes so it, it's a matter of your memory and we cannot deny the fact that there are cases that we have to store it in our a shorter memory and time uh, will pass that we can forget all of the things that we have observed okay so that's it now let's go to the next one the possible errors in performance assessment although performance assessment or authentic assessment is really needed inside the classroom it must go hand in hand with a traditional one but there could be the possible errors in performance assessment as what i have said in earlier discussions that performance assessment is really a subjective assessment okay so it depends on the evaluator though you have this rubric checklist um uh, rating scale but it depends on the perception of the observer okay if you have many observers maybe this particular performance of group one is good for the first observer but a uh, bad or not so go uh, good with uh, the second observer so it depends uh, rubric checklist um electrical notes uh, rating scales are there to help us to be uh, somehow objective in a subjective uh, context. <laughs> All right. So it is true that when teachers uh, utilize performance based in assessing students' performance, it can provide very useful information as what I have said regarding the achievement of the students. However, this performance assessment um, is possible where there is an area for us to commit an error when observing and judging the students' performances in product. And the possible errors that I am referring to are, we call it uh, personal biases. And uh, here, I divided it um, uh, in three uh, types. The generosity error, the severity error, and halo effect. Now, what is... Um, generosity error from the word being generous no when you are uh, generous you tend to give more okay so when doing this one uh, generosity error is done when the evaluator is overrating okay overrating uh, the performance or favors the high performance 
and then the next one, the opposite, severity error. This is when you uh, demerit, okay, when you give very low scores on the performances of uh, the third one here is the halo effect. So halo effect is being committed in uh, judging or in um, scoring the performances of uh, the students when you tend as a teacher, as an evaluator, observer, you tend to um, pick. Okay, when the evaluator tend to judge one specific um, individual uh, to create the overall impression so the single characteristic can affect the overall uh, impression that, uh, in order for the performance based assessment or authentic um, assessment uh, provide useful and valid information um, about the students learning um, this should uh, these are the things that um, we can do in order for us to be really objective in the subjective context so we must set clear guidelines so what is to be the observed, okay? Uh, what is to be, it is based on uh, the objective, what are the things that we need to see and how it is to be done. And then the manner, the observation should be recorded and how the result should be recorded and used, okay? All of the things here must be clear to the students in order for them to perform the task effectively. Okay, and then in addition to this one, the use of portfolio as well, and the students' participation can also contribute to the improvement of a performance-based assessment, okay? Okay, so I hope uh, you understand the concept here. Uh, I hope you have the idea on how to make, on how to design um, those mentioned uh, performance assessment um, tools or a scoring instrument. And if you have questions, you have to type them in our forum area or forum section in the LMS. That's all for now, and I hope you are learning.